Today's video is sponsored by Blendjet. So I had a realization the other day. I think I'm slacking. You've got new channels out here posting 500 times a week. You've got people having to take care of literal children and still posting better content than me. So naturally, I think it's only fair that I punish myself a little bit and recreate some of the internet's most vile recipes I maybe have ever seen. It's not like I just recently found these on my own. You guys have been sending these to me for years and they've just been hovering over this channel like a damn dark cloud. So let's just get two of them out of the way today the German style potato salad hot dog cake and then for dessert the ketchup and mustard cake I apologize if you've been lucky enough to avoid these up until now and because of me they will haunt your nightmares for the next few months but let's get right into this one when it comes to these two, I mean, pick your poison. Neither one looks much better than the other. At least before I torture myself with either one, I've got something good to share because of today's sponsor, Blendjet. Back in 2018, the Blendjet, the original portable blender was launched, and I am super excited to introduce to you today, Blendjet 2, the newest generation of portable blender that's even more powerful than the original. Blendjet 2 is cordless and portable, so you can recharge it with any USB port. It includes measurement markings on the back and hold 16 ounces of liquid. It's as powerful as a big blender and can turn fruits and vegetables into juice in seconds. And as you are seeing, it's water resistant, so you can make the most delicious cocktails while relaxing by the pool. In my limited time of using this, I can already tell it is super versatile and so easy and convenient to clean. And it's easy to take with you anywhere. When and how have you ever been able to blend on the go? So do yourselves a favor, click the link in the top line of the description to get 50% off of your Blendjet 2 and make sure to use my code DAVIDSEYMOUR12 to get an additional 12% off. And thanks so much to Blendjet for sponsoring today's video. For the German style hot dog potato salad cake, grab some potatoes and some mayo, a ton of pickles and salt and pepper, hot dogs, a red onion, an apple, and some cream cheese. As if today wasn't awful enough. I think I could be here all day listing the number of things wrong with this recipe and video, from how runny the cream cheese looks in the video to like the thought of loading apples with mayo and salt and pepper, ugh. And it's such a shame too, because it starts so innocently by boiling and peeling and chopping up your potatoes, a fresh apple, but as you will see, shit hits the fan very quickly. The first time I ever saw this recipe, I believe it went viral on Twitter because one of the funniest people of all time, Kaylin Allen, reacted to it. I'll leave his video down in the description as well, but I don't think he's ever made a video that didn't have me crying laughing during it. What the hell is this? Oh! Oh! Why you putting all them pickles on there? Oh, that's a fancy compartment. Oh, no. <laughs> oh! Y'all been that? Oh, this is nasty. He is very much a physical representation of what we're all thinking on the inside, watching these messes. At least I discovered slicing pickles on a mandolin is pretty fun and satisfying. I elected to do this because it was cheaper than buying pre-sliced pickles, but also I wanted to get them super thin because they're gonna end up as a layer along the top, and I don't know, it made sense in my head at the time. But now that everything is sliced and diced and chopped up, it's going to go in a bowl, along with a half cup of cream cheese, a third of a cup of mayo. Unless you despise the ground that somebody stands on, I don't know why you'd ever make this for somebody. Uh, maybe you're trying to sabotage a date because of how rancid it would make their breath, but you'll have to load this cake up into a springform pan or this retractable ring mold that I have load on a layer of your sliced pickles, and then it's gonna sit in the fridge for at least two hours to let the cream cheese harden. I don't know the reason. And if you weren't already cringing and retching at the sight of this, uh, we now have to slice some cold hot dogs and load them up around the side as a cute little decorative jellied meat border. Don't get me wrong, I will eat a few hot dogs a year at like a baseball game or a barbecue, but eating it cold straight out the package adhered to the side of a cream cheese, onion, potato, apple mess, 
it's safe to say that this will be a first, so as much as I do not want to, let's give it a try. At least the overwhelming smell is really only pickle, because it's so strong, that's really the only one you can even get a sense of. You know what? I have to be honest. I thought I was gonna be over here gagging. It is not terrible. There's so much pickle and red onion in it, that's kind of all you taste for a while. Uh, but then at the end, you get that kind of like gross, tangy finish of cream cheese. So it is not delicious. I will not be finishing it, to say the least. Ew. Can somebody also confirm or deny if this is actually German? Because I kind of refuse to believe. I mean, maybe. I have German friends, so please let me know. If it is, I won't know what to think. The fact that this is most likely the lesser of two evils today does not make me very excited. This next one might be in the Internet Hall of Fame. It's definitely one of those that just makes you think, why? But for the ketchup and mustard cake, you will need some flour and yellow mustard, ground cinnamon and a lot of ketchup, powdered sugar, baking soda, a lot of unsalted butter and nutmeg, a few eggs, brown sugar, baking powder, ground ginger and warm water. Unlike the last recipe, this one goes zero to 100 real quick. By the time you finish creaming your butter and brown sugar together, you're plopping in a whole bunch of ketchup. Now, I could be very wrong with this, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this might not be as bad as you think, at least the cake part. Don't click off the video, let me explain. Obviously, there are tomatoes in ketchup, so that's gonna be a little bit weird, but most of the other ingredients might work for a cake. You know, it's primarily sugar or corn syrup, it's got spices, like allspice, coriander cloves, like this might not be all that bad. And almost right in line with that thought, the dry ingredients get finished off with some ginger, nutmeg, and cinnamon, so maybe this will end up being like a cool little spice cake. Your batter gets dyed with some red food coloring and then split evenly into two nine inch circle pans and then baked in a 350 degree oven for about 28 minutes until a toothpick comes out clean from the center. I want you to know that all that hope and positivity is strictly for the cake portion. As far as the frosting goes, all of that goes out the window. This is literally just a buttercream with four sticks of unsalted butter, a whole lot of powdered sugar, but instead of flavoring it with some vanilla, maybe some peppermint or chocolate, nope, we're going in with a cup and a half of yellow mustard. I was blown away by how much the odor of mustard just permeated my entire house. It did not matter like what room you were in, apparently you could smell mustard from anywhere, so that's wonderful. Towards the end, the frosting did end up splitting a little bit, and I actually noticed the same thing happened to them in their video. Because of that, I thought there might be too much water content from the addition of all that mustard. Before I completely gave up on it and just chalked it up to that reason though, uh, I did want to gently heat it because sometimes frosting splits if your butter is too cold. And as you know, my house is like the Arctic, so that could very well be the reason. And as far as I can tell, that probably was the reason, based on how good this frosting looked after I re-whipped it. But unfortunately now, my cakes are fully cooled and removed from their subsequent pans. The frosting is ready to go, and it is time to marry these two together. Let's look on the bright side. If nothing else, I got a funny tweet out of this recipe. Uh, I got to practice layering my cakes and frosting. But, who am I kidding? In all likelihood, this will end up being a waste of time and end up in the trash. Uh, but let's give it a shot anyways. Just a little thumbnail for you. I'm telling you, even when the cake was baking, it smelled good. It just smelled like a holiday spice cake. Um, as for this frosting though, I probably could have put a little less on there, but the layers look good. Before I ruin my entire sense of taste, uh, I want to taste the cake alone and see how that is. I knew it! The cake is amazing! It's like a touch dry, but some simple syrup would fix that no problem. I would not know there's ketchup in there. I'm sorry, but that is good. But now, time for the part you guys actually care about. Oh 
Holy shit. I like mustard. I put it on like grilled chicken, burgers, uh, but this is putrid. I don't understand why they went so hard with the mustard. In both cakes combined, there's a half cup of ketchup. In the frosting alone, there's a cup and a half of mustard. It's like almost a whole bottle. If they had toned it down to like a half cup as well and then just compensated with food dye, maybe it'd be edible, but then you wouldn't have idiots like me on the internet gagging, so. Cake part, yes try, frosting, throw it out. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big old like. Thank you once again to Blendjet for making this one possible. If you do not follow me on Twitter and Instagram, please go do so. The links are down in the description. Other than that, have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you right back here next time. Peace. With the M, M without the A, D Put the burgers in my money, super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision